on today's episode of Anish Thing, I spoke with Sham. Sham is the person who introduced me to raw jeans and raw denim about six, seven years back. And it's been a fascinating journey, which I can't wait to share with you. Great to have you on the show, Sham. Been a while since we spoke. Thanks, Anish. I'm really looking forward to a chat. Nobody's talked to me about selvage denim in this format or raw denim for that matter. So it's insane. Thanks, uh, thanks so much for doing this. My pleasure. I think you changed my perception of denim about six, seven years back. Uh, I remember I got I got to know of Cora somehow, and I landed up at uh, the workshop that time at Oakland. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know it was a workshop and not a showroom or something, and I just landed there. And I think a lot of people were surprised there, saying, "Who is this guy?" And uh, the team that was really sweet. You weren't there, but they really took me through everything. And that's that's the first time I was like, "Wait, there's this whole." Uh, world of denim out there that I'm missing out on and since then it's been a very interesting journey for me as a denim enthusiast as a jeans enthusiast and I'm hoping we'll be able to do that for a lot of other people today yep I mean denim is like uh, it's an ocean right and you just see the surface and uh, the whole world which is just underneath the uh, basically defines you know the whole uh, uh, magic which you see on the surface so uh, yeah. I'm, I'm glad. I mean, uh, let's deep dive. Uh, so let's start with your journey, actually. Uh, your journey into denims and then Cora. My my journey with denims began actually as a dhobi. You know, uh, so I used to uh, work after uh, studying chemical engineering. I landed a job uh, in Biocon, and, which is in Bangalore, where I am right now. And... Uh, you know, uh, the company used to make uh, industrial enzymes. And as part of that, uh, there were cellulases. Okay, cellulase is an enzyme that cuts cotton, primarily. And uh, I, you know, you know, like you're young and uh, you want to see, I mean, how enzymes are applied. So while I was on the manufacturing side, I got involved with the, uh, the marketing of those enzymes. So I used to travel with my marketing colleague, buddy, you know, uh, we used to go to laundries and uh, with the enzymes that were made by us, we used to see the magic they used to work on the denim, right? And that got me kind of uh, uh, involved, you know, right from the get-go. This is like 92. And, uh, you know, then a couple of years doing that, Levi's uh, was uh, entering the country, right? This was 94. And they had set up an office and... Uh, they were looking uh, for people to come and work at uh, at Levi. And I got like really excited, you know, uh, so that this is like the brand that uh, you have worn, you know, when you were a kid, you know, your uh, family or friends, they used to get you a pair from abroad. And now they are here, you know, and uh, you get a chance to work in the company. So I applied for a job and uh, that's how I became the Dhobi at Levi's, you know. So this was like 94 end, and uh, I started uh, working in denim, you know. So I started literally in the laundry, in, in on the technical services side to develop uh, the washing process of uh, denim. And I had no clue how to wash, right? I just knew the application of enzymes primarily. Uh, so, yeah, so that's where my journey began. And then from there, it was uh, 18 years uh, almost of working in Levi's. Uh, it's it's one of the most amazing companies uh, to work, uh, you know, for to work in to work with people, and uh, you grow to love uh, denim and uh, whatever is associated with denim, right? I mean, yeah. it's like you you said earlier, like this is a, it's a culture of its own, right? And and the culture is defined by the people, by the hard work, by uh, you know the toils that go into making the fabric that is. Uh, that rules the world. I mean, there's no yeah. other fabric that rules the world like denim does. So, yeah, for that's me, my journey. Uh, yeah. For me, Levi's is also a brand that I've admired a lot as someone who started a brand. And, you know, a lot of times uh, when you talk about homegrown or handcrafted or small batch, a lot of these jargons that are thrown around, a lot of times bigger brands are made to look like a little bit of villains or, you know, those big corporations. But to me, Levi's is one of those brands that is done really, really well. And they're still soaked in culture so much. Yeah, I mean, and 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 that's I think the the whole DNA of Levi's is people. 
and uh, you know uh, wherever levi's is present in the world i mean when i left which was 10 years ago levi's was present in 110 countries now imagine you know uh, you put a you take a box and you put uh, people from 110 countries in one place yeah. right uh, it's it's just insane i mean it's it's very tough for anybody to create culture like levi's can right i mean i mean they are the the pinnacle of uh, this category per se right yeah. i mean the originator of the category and the pinnacle so uh, you know there are so many people around the world who can proudly say that we have a little bit of levis in us right uh, and then that that's very rare for any company to get to that stature so uh, i am i'm sitting in front of you because i mean i owe it to levis right of course yeah. i mean there's a little bit of me in it right of uh, course lots of you so yeah lots of me i mean but a little bit you know uh, and uh, but yeah it teaches it teaches you it gives you the opportunity to grow to uh, fail to uh, you know create certain path breaking uh, areas that uh, uh, you know you would not think that uh, working in such a large company uh, and 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 you know as i say the elephant is dancing now for the past uh, 12 years uh, but hey this is not about levi's right this is about yeah. denim Okay, so smart devil. Uh, so, yeah. so after Levi's, <laughs> uh, what yeah, happened? Another, so what? Uh, uh, well, after Levi's, uh, there, there was uh, there was a period when uh, I was in uh, San Francisco. I used to work uh, in the headquarters there, and uh, uh, you know there was this uh, thing which was calling at me that I need to do something on my own, and it was brewing for actually many years when I was in Levi's and. Uh, uh, there was a startup from india that uh, was building a brand called uh, share sing i i don't know if you're familiar with it this was yeah, 2012 yeah. right and uh, they reached out to me and said that look uh, why don't you uh, join forces and uh, i thought it's a great way to uh, become a part of uh, you know the next generation and uh, learn you know this whole e-commerce uh, behavior that was uh, at its uh, just at its root it was just starting and so i returned uh, i i quit and i came back in uh, april 2012 and i joined uh, share sing and within 6 months you know there were common investors so they basically folded into uh, mintra and uh, then i thought this is the right time to carve your own path you know the opportunity presented itself it was just perfect and that's how the beginnings of cora uh, you know are which is end of 2012 onwards so uh, that brought me to starting cora in 2013 we set up the company and uh, 2014 june we uh, went live uh, on our website uh, so it's been 8 years uh, you know just uh, building cora after levi's you can say and uh, now nice. uh, in cora's 8 years 8 years yeah 8 years so uh, so yeah i mean th- that's that's been the journey so far I I was in Bombay for a little while uh, after Delhi because when I came back from uh, uh, the stint at Levi I was in Delhi and then set up Cora there so uh, you know we found uh, a great uh, partner in Bombay shirt and they said why don't you come and become a part of our family so Cora found a new home and uh, that has helped uh, Cora to uh, reach a lot more bums as i say and uh, and hence it that took me to bombay so i was there for a bit and then uh, i moved back to bangalore because i i realized i mean you know my calling was always here i've been here for 35 years so this is home now i keep traveling to mumbai i'm i'm there every week uh, every month for a week or so and uh, yeah happily building cora so let's get into uh, denims and i want to uh, keep this as simple as possible because i think this is a rabbit hole that can just You, you can keep sinking in and in. Let's just start to the very basics. What's the difference between raw denim and, if I may say so, regular denim that we end up buying? Raw denim is like a a blank canvas. Okay, it's 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 strong. It's uh, you know it's clean. It's pure. There's nothing on it so far, right? And uh, denim, which is available, like jeans, which are available off the rack. mostly right these are like uh, already created artworks so you know when you when you're buying an artwork off the shelf 
that's like buying regular denim. And when you're buying the canvas to kind of, uh, you know, paint your uh, picture on that canvas, that's raw denim. And that's that's that I find is the simplistic comparison between the two, right? So there is an artist in you, okay, through your lifestyle and and through your uh, activities, through what, uh, how, or whatnot. Uh, it's it's more the how that you engage with your environment, okay. That is a snapshot which gets captured on your raw denim with time, and uh, with wash denim, which is like you know which already has a picture painted on it and that's the reason why you bought it right that picture becomes like a permanent thing so it's very tough to write your own story on a pair which has already been treated and that's the biggest difference between raw denim visually versus uh, washed denim right can you actually take a step back before the washing also like how are how are jeans made uh, how does the fabric start what's the whole process well, you know, it's uh, denim is a textile, like any other textile. So there is a raw material, and the raw material can be cotton or any other fiber. And, uh, you know, that cotton gets into uh, becoming a yarn. Okay, so from a fiber, it's spun into a yarn. And then that uh, yarn is either dyed or is woven, okay, to make a, the textile, okay, or the uh, the fabric as it is called. And then that fabric is finished in a certain way, right? Which could be to shrink it or to, you know, add a treatment to it. And that becomes the textile which is ready to be used to make clothing, right? To make a pair of jeans or a jacket or whatever. So, so that's uh, summarily what you know the the journey of cotton is to the end of the fabric, right? The fabric then gets fashioned, okay, so in, in different ways. In the case of denim, you can cut it and you can make a pair of jeans. And then you can wear it like that. Or you can wash the pair of jeans and then wear a washed pair of jeans, okay? So many textiles, they are, for example, let's take a sari, right? A sari, when it is uh, a woven, right, the the end product is what you wear. Okay, it's it's that piece of textile that you drape around your body. That's what you wear. And raw denim is similar to that. Okay, it's it's that piece of textile which is woven, and then it is cut into pants or a jacket or a shirt, and then you wear that shirt. Now you can take that jacket after it is made or that pair of pants, and you can wash it, and then it gets a certain character. It looks faded. It you know you kind of infuse it with certain nostalgia or you know uh, a certain way uh, that it should look and that is also wearable okay so, so raw denim is the unwashed version of uh, you know the garment and uh, then there's a washed version of the garment okay so uh, in denim per se there are certain things which are peculiar to it right so for example the indigo dye so when the yarn is spun okay it's dyed with indigo and then, then there are there are uh, many types of indigo. Although the most widely used indigo today is a liquid version, which is uh, easily soluble, and then it gets applied to the cotton, you know, uh, in a in a not so difficult manner, right? Earlier, uh, the the uh, the yarns used to be dyed in natural indigo. Okay, so you will have the whole artisanal side of dying okay so you can see there are japanese masters there is a lot that happens in kutch rajasthan used to be a place okay down south uh also where you know actually uh indigo as as the plant was uh you know from which uh indigo is extracted was very prevalent uh and and found down south right so uh, you will find that that blue color okay is what actually makes denim unique because uh and it, and it's a very tough dye because the 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 dye is not soluble so something which is not soluble is very tough to apply to cotton right Got it. so hence it needs to be reduced and then it gets oxidized and it goes through many such phases so the color of indigo actually starts off as green and then with oxidation it becomes blue right also uh, you know, and then stop me where you think it's getting too technical, right? No, no, so, it's okay. You, okay, so, 
the beauty of uh, indigo is that uh, it's a it's a physical it has a physical bond with cotton so it does not chemically react with the cotton to stay fixed okay it's almost like uh, it coats the cotton fiber so you know the more you keep dyeing the more is the deposit of indigo on the fiber and that's what gives it its depth so if you you know in in from a nerdy point of view like deeper denims are really uh, very, are sought after and 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 why they're sought after is because they will fade with time right and the contrast that you will get will be very very stark now the thing is to get a deep denim it increases the task tremendously because you have to keep dyeing and coating the fabric so it it makes it more laborious it makes it more expensive and a lighter denim is uh, you know the the number of coats that you have on the denim are lesser so then the contrast between a deep blue and the white which is at the core of the fiber is not very strong so uh, they look more worn and washed out uh, whereas the dark denims look like really really uh, you know they have a sharp uh, appeal this is the fascinating part for me right uh, when you, when you talk to denim geeks they will get into this whole thing right how many coats yeah uh, how many the, tips actually it's called dips how many dips amazing yeah? so yeah so uh, it's it's, so it's to, great so just to summarize when when you buy a pair of raw denims there's absolutely no treatment on it right there's no stone wash there's no fading all None. of those things are going to happen as you wear your pair and that's going to fade according to your body according to your lifestyle according to what you put in your pocket regularly yeah uh, like one of my i got my first pair from kora 7 years back and you can see which pocket i keep my phone in because there is a, a little outline yeah. of that phone right it's faded like that and that's the exciting part for me rather than buying something which is already been artificially been given that uh, treatment yeah i mean these are these are threads for life okay that's what i call them because your life you know is mirrored in your pair of jeans and uh, and that comes from the beauty of indigo you know because it actually leaves the fabric to allow you to write your story okay that's the joy of indigo as a dye right and there aren't many such dyes because the the perception that is created is that anything which is which does not fade is better right because the color is the reason why you buy a particular garment right so if it's a bright red then you want the brightness to remain for as long as you keep wearing it and unfortunately that it does not mimic life right uh, nothing remains as bright as where it is born so uh, and and the beauty of life is that it it takes on you know whatever the nature of how you have interacted with your environments and uh, that starts reflecting on you as a person and a, and a pair of jeans does that so and a pair of raw denim does that beautifully so uh, so raw denim is like the pinnacle of you know jeans wear so if you want something uh, that will be with you that will grow with you uh, you know you have to pick raw denim and unfortunately you know uh, that is a space where very few brands uh, reside or operate in and and that's what uh, is also the best thing from an environment standpoint right i mean denim to make denim is not uh, is not a very sustainable or a uh, you know uh, it, it's a process that consumes a lot of energy it's a process that takes in a lot of chemicals there is a lot of effluent which gets discarded right so so to make denim it's uh, it doesn't lend itself to being in uh, environment till friendly okay so uh, so what happens is and, and then you take that fabric and then you say okay now i will do more on it it's uh, you know maybe you can just wear it raw and and uh, let your life do uh, the work on the pair you know why is it that more brands don't put out raw denims because again uh, i done an episode on finding black t-shirts because that's that can be quite a task i think finding yeah. a good pair of denims is even tougher because if i if i walk into a lot of showrooms and it, i just want a regular pair of like no treatment no fading nothing it's actually very difficult to find that so uh, what's the reason behind that well uh 
you know, it, I think the the answer lies in the uh, what we've been conditioned to, uh, you know, to look uh, at, to look like. For example, I want to look in a certain way, and my clothing has to reflect that, right? Uh, and and that conditioning happens from the very beginning, whether it's through peers or through family, you know, uh, friends. And uh, and that's the reason why you would like to take a finished product and start wearing it because you think that from the get go you will look the part that the garment is meant to make you look, right? Whereas raw denim is it's it's a work in process always. It it continues right from the day you get it to the time you say I can't wear it anymore. Okay, it's morphing, it's changing, and uh, that change is not easy to uh, accept. Okay, I think, and then that's the reason why raw denim is not uh, as popular. Okay, um, also the thing with raw denim is the value addition. Okay, is missing in terms of the visual that you add on raw, which gives it a very, uh, you know, like you can get a distressed pair, right? Now a brand can charge more for a distressed pair, which is contra to the whole purpose of the pair of jeans which yeah. is which are meant to last because a distressed pair of jeans you will you know you'll use it for specific occasions and it will tear faster it its life is shorter but you will charge more because there is more work which has gone into create that right thirdly i also feel that you know uh, like an artwork when you when you buy something you know you buy it to admire it right whereas as an artist okay which is raw denim you get it because there's an artist in you right so so there are there are fewer artists and there are more admirers okay and then and that's the uh, you know that's the balance which is there in nature right there are few people who create the art and there are more people who admire the art right so uh, so yeah i think that's why denim in its raw form is uh, is limited you know to a few brands talking about it to a few brands popularizing it uh, and it's it's more a foreign concept because uh, you know it's it's not something which is inherent or integral to India because India has not grown up with jeans. India has grown up making denim, okay, right from the seventies uh, when uh, you know denim was uh, made in the country, and today India is amongst the top three uh, denim producing nations in the world. Between ten to fifteen percent of the world's denim is made by India, right? So, uh, so India has always been a manufacturer and not a consumer of uh, denim. So that the cultural context of raw denim was never uh, available to consume. Okay, in the past ten years, you know, as uh, a lot of us have travelled, we've we've gone out, we've seen uh, people, you know, wearing uh, you know raw denim. It looks really, really nice, uh, whether it's brand new or whether it's uh, six months or whether it's two years old uh, and you can make out you know when you look at it that this is something which has not been created by somebody else but, but this has got an authentic story that that pair is telling you so uh, so i think that uh, that dna was kind of uh, that link was not there right as as uh, brands like cora you know uh, start creating those uh, uh, sparkles or creating those links okay that culture will build and then I'm hoping that, you know, in the next 10 to 15 years, we'll see a lot more raw denim uh, specialists. Okay. Yeah. And and they will come, right? And and uh, the mills, I'm, when I talk to the mills, I'm seeing that now. Uh, there is a talk about selvage, which is, you know, connected to this whole raw denim uh, uh, space, right? Uh, mills are making selvage uh, denim, uh, you know. It's, although That's it's actually... Still, that's a good segue into uh, my next question, which was, uh, so what's the selvage angle then? Well, selvage, the the uh, the whole selvage uh, kind of DNA is in the weaving of denim. Okay. Now, uh, denim was you consumed in very small batches when it started, like in the uh, 19th century, you know, 1850s 1870s the consumptive level of denim was really really small so it used to be made in small batches like one one trouser one one pant each right and uh it was all made by hand on looms uh which had a shuttle and uh 
you know so the width was kept to uh balance basically what is the human effort required to move the shuttle from one end to the other end right which is about 30 to 36 inches i mean that's the width of the loom and also that allowed you to cut one pair uh in a you know a, from a bolt of fabric so in one length you can cut one pair right and that's how it started so uh, so you know a shuttle basically carries the yarn okay from one end to the other and then returns from the other end to the end where it started, you know, and, and that back and forth uh, looping, right, basically closes off the edge of the fabric because it's a continuous weft yarn that uh, seals uh, the denim. So you'll find selvage is basically the edge which is cleanly finished because the, uh, the weft yarn has uh, moved back and forth and created a clean line, right? So uh, th that's how kind of selvage began. Earlier, there used to be no marking also. Okay, then, uh, you know, uh, I think it was Levi that uh, realized that, you know, everybody makes denim now. So, uh, or jeans out of denim. So how do I distinguish myself? And hence, I need to uh, assign like a mark, you know, which is integral to Levi. So they added a, a color in the selvage. Right. So the edge was basically a white color. And uh, so it's it's a warp yarn, which is there, which is white in color. And they also added, uh, I think it was purely a white. It, there was no red line selvage then. It was just a, a an ecru or a white uh, line at the end. And uh, when you turn up your jeans, right, or you turn them inside out, then you will see that uh, selvage, which has got a white uh, line. And that was like, hey, man, this is an authentic pair of Levi's, so it is of quality. So it was a distinguishing factor. Okay, Now, that's how the, the whole selvage, uh, uh, you know, the reason for selvage to exist was. But later on, of course, it became, uh, you know, a point of differentiation. And then uh, it also became, uh, as industrialization happened, uh, selvage was relegated to a very, very small uh, production that happened in the world and then it became very very niche so uh, so then the artisanal side you know the conversation around selvage started saying that okay now you know uh, it's gone right to the edge and how do i bring it back to the mainstream because selvage is actually the the central point of jeans culture is around selvage right you might oscillate yeah. away from it but you will always come back to uh, selvage because that's how it started that's the origin of denim right uh, and uh, from a from a physical or, or a or a scientific standpoint okay the reason why selvage uh, denims are uh, i would not say better but they're different from the current uh, you know mass produced uh, on a on a wider loom or an air jet loom uh, denims the the difference is that uh, the kind of cotton that you use, okay, has to be more superior to make selvage. It starts there, right? Because it's a continuous yarn that goes back and forth. So it needs to have the strength to, uh, you know, be worked so much on the loom. Because uh, if, if the cotton is of inferior quality, then the loom uh, or the yarn keeps breaking. And then there is a loom stop. And when the loom stops, it lose, you lose productivity, right? So, so you need a better quality cotton to make selvage denim, right? So you know inherently that if you're getting selvage, the cotton that has gone in is of a superior quality or it is a longer staple, right? Uh, it's got more strength in it. So that is one reason. The second reason is that the smaller looms, okay, first they were hand looms and then they became power looms, okay? So they're automated. The, the torque generated on these looms is actually uh, much higher compared to the torque which is generated or the 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 edge at looms they are operated at a lower torque okay so uh, because they are operated at a lower torque although they spin at a very high rpm almost four times the rpm of uh, uh, you know a selvage loom right so this torque basically makes it more compact so the selvage denim you know you'll feel it a little bit more dense right oh yeah it's con it, it's consciously kept a little bit more open because then it will shrink Right. And uh, but but that's the second reason. OK, by uh, selvage denim is uh, different from, you know, your mass produced uh, denim. 
And thirdly, okay, there's a cachet to it because less than 1% of the world's denim is salvaged. So it's rare. I mean, nobody nobody makes it anymore. So if you are if you are a uh, you know um, a connoisseur, or if, if you are you like you like to know you know what goes into things and how they are made and what's the story behind them, like yourself, right? I mean, salvage will appeal to all aspects of you. Okay, it appeals to your heart. It appeals to your uh, you know wearability, how you look. So it's it's a full package, right? Uh, which you don't get in in ready made artwork uh, you know jeans which are available off the shelf so so on the on the youtube channel actually will show uh, what we mean by this uh, selvage edge uh, the white and the red line and stuff like yeah. that and okay. i think for me it's also become that slight bit of a flex right like the same thing with sneakers when you see someone wearing a particular uh, pair of sneakers you have that little hat tip sort of a moment yeah, and yeah. Uh, since I got my first pair of selvage denims, I always notice the cuff of someone's jeans. And if I do uh, find it to be a selvage, you're like, okay, that person does know uh, yeah. a little bit about denims and they do put that uh, care uh, in the pair they got. It's called respect, man. Do you know, yeah. uh, it's like, so So that's, that's what happens, right? I mean, there is this affinity for things which uh, you feel are the better things in life. And yeah. salvage is that, right? Uh, so it, it fits into that uh, beautiful space, which appeals to, uh, yeah, the connoisseur in you. So when it comes to then purchasing a pair of jeans, right? What all aspects should one look at? And I'm not only talking about perhaps the weight of the fabric, salvage or raw, but also are there any points, other points to look at in terms of construction? Well, when you purchase a pair of jeans, okay, of course, construction is like a very important aspect because it tells you about the durability of the product, right? I mean, if it's made in a certain way, then you know that it will uh, last, okay? And, and when you uh, when you spend some money on, on buying a pair, you want that product to be with you for a longer period of time. So so construction makes, makes a difference, right? Uh, also, the construction gives you a certain visual aesthetic. Right, which is needs to appeal to you. So uh, a construction basically captures, uh, or rather marries, the industrial nature of manufacturing the garment and the uh, and the use of it. So uh, you know, let's say uh, you want a pair, which is I uh, let me call it a stealth pair, right? Which uh, so you you get a pair of jeans and it's got indigo threads or blue colored threads and then none of the details of the the gene are visible okay now that stealth pair is completely completely in a way bland right so so you want that so you want attention to be on the top right so you want your jacket or your shirt or your t-shirt or or what's the hat you're wearing or you know so so you want the bottom to be just completely quiet it does not make any sound and then suddenly you've got these great pair of sneakers which you know just kind of uh, uh show up so uh, you know so so your attention then goes to the sneakers that you're wearing right so so that's one way to choose like hey man i got a pair which is constructed in indigo threads or you know it's it's completely quiet it's noise free, right? It allows me to focus on certain aspects of uh, me, like I, I like sneakers or like something else, right? So, so that's one way to go about it, right? The uh, the contra to that is that you choose one which has got, uh, let's say, a brand like True Religion, right? It did just the opposite of what I just described. It said my pants are what you will keep staring at, right? So, if you find anybody wearing True Religion, all you're doing is looking at them because their pants are so vocal and and they are uh, they're strong i mean they're, they they feel like man this is like, this is really really solid it gives you a sense of power so it's so construction does that to you right it can it can change the way the aesthetic of the garment turns out right the uh, the other thing to look for right in in a pair of jeans is of course uh, the main thing that people look for is color okay i mean that's it goes without saying like uh, I want a light pair. I want a dark pair. I want uh, 
uh, you know, and and the the joy of indigo is that it's got zillions of blues built in because of the nature of how uh, you know indigo dye gets applied. You can move from green to blue to light green to dark blue to I mean, th there's so many shades. I mean, we get you know it's it's a challenge to keep naming new fabrics. You know, it, it's like that, right? So uh, so color is the second thing, which is uh, it depends on. If you uh, if you want something which is muted, then you choose a darker color. And also, if you prefer that there is a contrast that comes up over a time, and you say, "Hey, there's a subtle whisker there," then the darker color works well, right? Uh, you might choose a mid shade, which is again, you know, like most things, things which are in the middle sell the most, right? And that because that's what people gravitate to. So the mid shades uh, are uh, infused with a sense of nostalgia. So like the you know. The 60s, 70s. I mean, that era uh, plays a big role in uh, selling denim around the world. So uh, you know, you have a lot of the mainstream high street brands which will uh, sell you jeans of a mid shade color, right? Because it it's got nostalgia, right? And and nostalgia is the biggest thing that people respond to. So what about uh, the? I'm so sorry. Continue, please. No, go go for it. What about the weight of the fabric? Yeah, so so that's that's the next thing, right? Uh, like if you knew about the weight of the fabric, then uh, you are, you would be able to make a choice that what is going to work for you better. Like traditionally, denim used to be much heavier because it was a pure work garment. Okay, it was not meant for the office. It was not meant to run in. It was not meant to skate. It was just a blue collar not even a blue collar it was a worker product like it was hardcore heavy right uh, so uh, so 12 ounces 13 ounces i mean that was the range of how denim started but as that work you know was phased out from uh, the gentrification that was happening in the world uh, you know the denim fabric became lighter and now you know we have let's let's say in kora we we have fabrics which are from six and a half ounces to fourteen and a half ounces, right? Uh, and uh, the the people who who like jeans but they don't like them to be uh, you know dragging you where you go. I mean, you want a lighter pair, and that's how stretch has also come into the play. I mean, it's it's no longer a pure cotton uh, denim. Okay, it's it's there are so many blends which are available now with uh, advances in technology and uh, you know the fabrics have become more specific to your use so weight plays a very key role okay in that because let's say you pick a lighter fabric you know which is seven and a half ounces or eight ounces that get, that has a lot more drapeability compared to a very structured 13 and a half 14 ounce fabric so uh, drapeability means that it it is more fluid uh, it will uh, you know flow with you as you walk it doesn't obstruct you. It feels uh, almost weightless, you know, as if you're not wearing something. Whereas uh, the contrast of a heavier denim fabric is that it feels like body armor, like you're wearing something really solid. Does. And yeah, and you feel like it, it's protecting you, right? So you get a sense of security when you're wearing uh, a very heavy kind of uh, fabric. It's, it's, it's like sneakers also, right? I mean, if you wear a pair of leather sneakers, which have got a very strong top right then you feel that your uh, your feet are actually uh, in a very safe space but if you if you wear a pair of sneakers which has got a very light or a, a, almost a fabric which is there on top like i wear vans all the time because i feel that it's got a solid base and i feel that uh, you know the top of it is really soft and it allows me to flex a lot it's it's the perfect kind of uh, skater uh, shoe right i mean that's how it was designed so, uh, so it, it gives you the best of both worlds, right? A lightweight as well as uh, a heavy bottom, which uh, sticks with you. So, so yeah. So, so heavyweight denim gives you that feeling, you know, of, of security, of uh, confidence, and uh, but I mean, it's it's again, you know, there are so many uh, variants available. Like now, now there is there are variants which have got extra stretch, right? So a lot of the women's wear space. Because it's very tough to cut a pair of jeans to fit a woman's body. It's it's not an easy uh, task, right? So so stretch, which was 
which I think was in the 60s that it started coming out, right? Uh, Candani was one of the mills that pioneered the whole stretch uh, denim uh, space. And uh, now it's mainstream. I mean, 90% of jeans that are available have stretch in them, right? So uh, because they, it's easier to fit a person which, you know, uh, I mean, you're, you're not reliant only on the cut of the uh, pair. The fabric does most of the work for you. And, and that's what uh, stretches. So, so that's the third aspect. There is weight, okay, lightweight, heavyweight, and stretchability. So, in fact, when you when you look at denims, it's very tough to find heavier denims which have got stretch, because it's unstable to make that. You know, you'll find most of the stretch fabrics are lighter fabrics. Okay. So you'll find them, you know, eight ounces to 12, 12 and a half ounces. I mean, that's the uh, range of all the stretch denim and the heavier denim. We have a couple uh, heavyweight stretches, but you will not find uh, stretch in heavyweight. So along with weight, flexibility or stretchability is an important criteria. Okay. Just to summarize, we talked about color, which is one. We talked about, uh, you know, whether it's a raw or whether it's a washed pair. I mean, how do you choose a denim? So you look for that, right? We talked about construction. Like what? What do you look for when you when you want to make a pair? And then we talked about weight and stretchability, right? The last thing is the details. Okay, so when you look at a pair, uh, there are many things that go into it. So, for example, there are trims. Okay, so you will find uh, like one of the brands that does you know it's it's a visually exciting pair to see is Jacob Cohen. Okay, if you if you pick up that pair. And you see how impeccably the application of trims is on that garment. It's very few people can do something like that, right? Uh, because it, it's a visual treat to look at all the bells and whistles which are there on that pair. So, so trims is a very important aspect also, which uh, and you will know from the finish of the trims, or you will just by looking at it, you know, uh, the way the light kind of reflects on a certain metal. That, that gives you cues that, look, maybe this is a well-made pair of jeans or, or the trims that are used are of high quality, uh, you know, including, let's say, the zipper for that matter. So there is a company, okay, which is uh, Riri, uh, and they make uh, zippers which are like, you know, one of the most well-renowned uh, companies of zippers in the world, right? And it's in the sound, you know, I mean, like when, uh, really? when we had spoken, yeah, it's in the sound, like when the slider moves up and down right so you've got the teeth of a zipper and the slider is moving uh, up and down right to open or close and from that sound you can you, it gives you a cue right like what is the quality of my zipper and that's one thing that you know you might get stuck with a, a particular like in that chain of teeth one one teeth kind of pops and you know that hey man this is not a good quality zipper so it's not going to last you right so you look at the zipper and that gives you uh, the sense that it is well made or, uh, you know, if it's a thin zip or a wide zip. So, for example, in, in Cora, you'll find uh, that we use like a 5YG, that's a standard width and gauge of the zipper. So, when you, when you unzip or you zip up, it feels really solid, right? And you can use a thinner zipper and you will not get that sense. So, so these are these small cues that are available in the garment for you to pick up and say that, hey man, the the pair that I'm getting, I mean, is it uh, is it going to last or it's not going to last? And that and that's the finale, right? Eventually, you ask yourself about the durability of the pair because you're putting money down on the table to get something that you're going to wear for some time. I do have a question on zippers. What is with the whole culture around uh, zippers versus uh, the buttons? Because every time you buy a pair of uh, salvage denim, that uh, option keeps coming up, which I usually don't see otherwise. You know, it, it, it harks back to when zippers weren't invented, right? So the only closure of garments was through buttons or hooks. That's how uh, garments were closed or opened. And uh, when the zippers were invented and then started getting applied to garments, the ease of operation of a zipper is the reason why most of the garments have zips nowadays, right? Uh, and uh, the button is kind of faded. So if you're if you're like you know uh, looking for what's the old school way of 
you know uh, closing your jeans then button is the yeah. answer right yeah. and if you're if you're practical uh, you want a fast uh, in and out if i may use that you know then you look for a zipper because uh, buttons take a bit longer from a practicality standpoint i'm and, learning that uh, because i just got my new pair from kora yesterday with <laughs> uh, the buttons and it ta- it takes some time to get used to it yeah it 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 it, it takes a bit right uh, also you know uh, so there's my first my first pair of button flies was uh, the quintessential 501 levis right this was 1990 yeah actually it was uh, way before when i was a kid but i never got to appreciate it so in 1995 when levis opened their first store uh, in bangalore in, uh, in fact and i went to the store on the first day and i got myself a pair of 501s and that whole you know uh, it's it's i think it's stupidly macho but the whole thing of you know uh, unbuttoning your uh, you know fly and it gives that sound and it gives you a feeling of hey man this is just like insane you know do you know tuck 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 it just opens and then you got to button it up uh, so uh, yeah that was i think uh, my first experience with button flies i gave up on that you know uh, a few years later and i find zips to be more practical that's it but but yeah but button flies uh, have their own place in history so uh, so a lot of uh, uh, jeans makers who want to maintain the authenticity of the uh, of the product okay they would only offer you button fly okay. we of course being a custom maker offer you both so you can pick so we'll take a short break and when we come back i want to touch upon buying your first pair of raw denims raw pair of jeans in india and how to look after them hello it's been another great week on the ivm podcast network on cyrus says cyrus is joined by kunal vijaykar the two along with abbas talk about food school memories and kunal's show khane mein kya hai on vartalab akash and navin are joined by balram vishwakarma the founder of the influential instagram page andheri west shit posting the three of them talk about how the page started and ways of tackling negative comments on the internet on anish thing anish is joined by roshni bajaj food writer and yash banagi coo of hungering they talk about the state of fine dining in india and its evolution on the habit coach ashdin is joined by vikram mittal of mavi's pantry He talks about discovering kombucha and his experiment with flavors and tastes. Once again, don't forget to visit our merch store on ivmpodcast.com. We have some exciting stuff for you. Follow us on social media. We are IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. If you like our shows, spread the word. Tell your friends and don't forget to rate and review them wherever you're listening to them. You'll also find all our shows on youtubecom podcasts. And finally, we would like to thank our sponsors this week: Bumble, Kotak Privilege Program, and HDFC Mutual Fund. Thank you for making this possible. All right, welcome back to Anish Thing. I'm with Sham. We're geeking out on all things jeans and denims. And Sham, two more things I want to touch upon. One, uh, especially if you're in India, where to buy a good pair of uh, raw or salvage denims? and the second part is uh, the maintenance bit uh, especially the breaking in stuff like that and how you can actually keep maintaining your pair of uh, jeans and i didn't know this when i uh, when i first bought kora i think there was even a annual maintenance package sort of a thing available that you yeah. have in the car because uh, you would just keep repairing the denims and that was great yeah i mean that was the uh, yeah that's that was one of the features that we had and then we realized that you know till we don't scale the business uh, it's it's untenable to uh, offer that service so uh, we pause that for a bit uh, it it might come back uh, you know earlier than i can imagine but but to your first question about where do you get a good pair of jeans you know first you know and uh, uh, i would just start with the known brands right uh, if you want a a good pair of jeans i mean and the reason why i would say start with the known brands is because they invest a lot of time in uh, making uh, a good quality pair of jeans which is going to last you for a bit right uh, the second thing to do is uh, always feel the pair if the pair feels really really light right 
then it's 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 you know that it's not going to last you for a, a long time but but if you're in it just for the look of it then it's a different conversation right uh, a pair of jeans for me is it's it's meant to last you forever like you can keep wearing them repairing them and uh, they keep taking on a life on their own so uh, so when you're looking for uh, a good quality pair then start with the known brands i mean my affinity is for levi's i mean it's um, i'm one of the biggest fans of levi's having worked there right if you uh, if you want uh, to get a good pair of raw denim there are very few offerings in india and uh, hence uh, i would direct you to kora first because we've got a wide price range also of raw yeah. so the the thing about raw denim is that you know uh, it typically is made by the more uh, artisanal uh, makers right i mean who uh, pay a lot of attention to making each pair one by one and and that costs a lot of money right so you 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 can't get a good pair of raw denims at the price points that kora offers so you can come to kora and you can get uh, our prices now start at 3400 rupees so you know you can get a good pair of raw jeans that will last you for a long time uh, compared to any other pair for that matter but uh, within within the international space there are a lot of uh, brands uh, that are available so uh, and they ship to india as well so you can you know uh, look for them uh, there's uh, there's uh, there are e-commerce portals you know which are uh, shipping now like you can go to asos and then you can get a pair you know of raw denim just type in raw and you can see what all is available and get one of the more known brands i'm a big fan of uh, nudi for the work that they have done in in build their brand uh, for so many years now so uh, nudi is a you know if you're a raw denim Uh, fan right then you should have a pair of nudies in your wardrobe there are more new age uh, brands like uh, higher denim which is out of uh, the uk and uh, they started their uh, journey of making jeans at a time which is similar to kora so you know so we are kind of uh, uh, in the same cohort of time and uh, they they make a good pair of uh, raw denims as well uh they are also they're expensive so you can get a pair for about i think upwards of 190 pounds or 180 pounds so it's about 18000 rupees for a pair uh, of jeans um uh, nudies nudies of course my number one and then there are a lot of uh, small japanese brands that uh, make uh, amazing raw denim I mean, they are the masters of uh, you know making authentic more authentic than it is and uh, so you know you have pure blue japan which is one of the more newer brands momotaro uh, these uh, couple of these brands uh, samurai they make uh, great uh, you know solid solid denim which will last you forever uh, there is also if if you uh, as they say cross the pond and then you go to the us then there are a lot of la has a very vibrant uh, oh, yeah. denim seen okay it's it's known as the most uh, premium uh, denim market in the world and uh, there are a lot of makers uh, there you know independent makers uh, who make jeans so uh, if you ever get the opportunity to you know travel there that's the best thing to get yourself a few pairs because you always need about 8 to 10 pairs in your wardrobe right uh, of of jeans and uh, you know it, it's good to mix it up a little bit i think uh, because then you get to appreciate the 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 different nuances that are there in in the make of the product and not just stick with one brand but have you know uh, you know a, a few jeans from the main uh, high street brands and a few jeans from the more artisanal makers a few jeans from uh, you know uh, brands like uh, nudi or denim for that matter So so I would say always mix up your selection don't be limited to just one uh, path right uh, for me in india apart from uh, levi's of course uh, i don't know if they still have raw in india but i remember picking up a pair of uh, levi's uh, raw in india uh, uniqlo has uh, a pair of raw selvage uh, which i actually quite like and then of course there's kora and kora will do uh, personalization right on fittings and sizes yep man how could i miss uniqlo in in my list of brands i mean it's i really 
right there at the top you know from for a from a value standpoint they are one of the best brands uh, for a pair of jeans the the yeah. quality of the fabric the quality of the make it's uh, phenomenal so uh, if you're looking out to start off getting a good pair of jeans go to uniqlo they've got a good fit it's not very complicated you know you can start off with a comfort fit or a you know a regular fit uh, if you like slimmer jeans they have slimmer jeans as well but uh, they make a they make an amazing product yeah they have they have two fits for raw denims they have a regular fit and a slim fit uh, one last thing sham uh, on the care aspect right from breaking into your first pair and just taking care because yeah denim should last your lifetime we uh, you know we stress in cora a lot of uh, we we put we stress on the care because uh, which is very very kind of contra because you know actually you don't need to care for a pair of jeans as as simple as that right i mean it's it's a no care garment but the reason why we stress on the care is because we would uh, prefer if you extract the most from your pair of jeans and the joy of wearing should be there as long as you can right so the best care for a pair of jeans is not to wash your pair okay the uh, so the moment it touches water okay it it changes okay it's it's nature its dna uh, undergoes a shift okay so uh, if you can do not wash that's my first advice okay but uh, i've not gotten very far uh, with that advice uh, in my life so even at home i mean i have to wash right what's the longest so, you've gone without washing uh what a weird question to ask someone but yeah about uh, 7 years what yeah 7 years <laughs> you did not wash a pair of yeah pair and of then uh, yeah and i actually i haven't washed that pair still it's still there uh, uh <laughs> i haven't i haven't washed that pair yeah so uh, in fact at home you know all my jeans used to be assigned a space where i could uh, store them because uh, they used to stink and uh, you know i was told that look this is not on and i said look i'm not <laughs> going to kind of uh, give that up so uh, now they are back in my wardrobe because uh, you know my wife has become more amenable to be having my old pairs with in my uh, but, space so but, but if you're not washing which is again something you will read on all internet guides and uh, videos about uh, uh, about raw pair of jeans Uh, what are the other ways then you kill bacteria like freezing microwaving like what all do you end up doing the best the best method is to turn them inside out and air them in the sun because that's you know the the stench goes the uh, microbes uh, find a new home you know or they're demolished uh, so uh, you know that's the best method turn them inside out air them and you can wear them again the the myth about putting them in the freezer is not something uh, i want to put my might behind because the thing is that it all it does is it's very momentary okay it just freshens up the pair you feel when you take it out and then you wear it it just feels fresh but the uh, the microbes are dormant and the smell will be back uh, 15 minutes after you start uh, started uh, wearing your pair again so that's not it's from a hygiene standpoint i don't uh, recommend uh, the freezer you know i also think that uh, a a fairly doable method to maintain your pair is uh, just cut the washing cycles in half so by half i mean okay there are two ways to it like if you wash your pair every 3 4 times of wearing them then wash them after 7 8 times of wearing them okay so that's uh, so you reduce the frequency of wash and the the other half is that do not use a rigorous uh, cycle in your machine or uh, you know beat up your pair uh, just use a gentle cycle and uh, also the detergents that are used you know a lot of the detergent companies they sell us detergents uh, which are pretty strong because you know uh, those detergents uh, kind of eat the cotton from the surface and make the color look fresher and uh, that's that's not something which is advisable because we don't put our jeans through a lot of stress right in terms of dust dirt grime uh, if if you are doing that then yes you need a stringent detergent but for most daily use uh, uh, you need you know your non ionic kind of detergents like your easy uh, you know which are used for woolen or silk 
those are those are the more gentler kind of uh, detergent so use that and that's that's good enough so uh, you know to summarize wash a do not wash b if you have to wash wash less frequently c use a uh, a gentler cycle in your machine and use a gentler detergent please do not use tumble dry because like you know it uses up a lot of energy to dry your pair it will also shrink it quite a bit so the best thing is line dry your pair you can squeeze the water out and uh, just line dry it that's that's the best thing uh, i don't recommend ironing okay uh, but if you like your pair to be crisp and you have to iron then iron it uh, inside out don't iron on the surface because that also the indigo rubs more right so you don't want that you want to retain the indigo as much as possible as far as whiskers and you know that part is concerned where you want it to have a character which is yours then i would say uh, if you're not doing certain things like you put a wallet in your back right now that's an important component like a lot of people who uh, especially in the western world they use snuff boxes okay so these snuff boxes are typically round and and they will be kept in your front pocket and uh, if you uh, look up uh, blogs and stuff you will see the impressions of these snuff boxes coming onto the pair of jeans so uh, i would say uh, stuff your pockets with things that you normally would stuff your pocket with okay uh, because then the impression will come on the pair and it will build a very strong uh, character right if you also want uh, like you uh, you want a pair that uh, has a very stark contrast choose a darker shade of indigo do not wash it for 6 months at least okay if you if you're washing it the first time then use a little bit of vinegar because that reduces the uh, indigo from coming off uh, the garment okay uh, it retains the color a little bit more and uh, yeah and then that's it i mean Six months for sure, right? Again, that's a guideline I've seen everywhere that if you get a pair of raw jeans, at least give it six months before washing. I gave my first pair a year and a half for before I didn't even wash it. I just did a soak, and this is a really funny story because I was staying at and I remember this so clearly. I was staying at the presidential suite at JW Marriott in Bombay. <laughs> and i was happiest that there was a tub there and the jeans are put flat in the tub just to soak for 20 minutes and that was it yeah and it was that's very that's the best find a tub find a hotel find yeah. a tub you know find some nice detergent that smells yeah. really nice soak it you know and, and that's it yeah. so th- i think that's the best thing uh, you know after 6 months your first wash don't wring it don't do anything uh Also you know there's this myth about what happens to stains on the garment right i mean i think stains is a part of the you know yeah. the character of of the product so don't like kind of uh, uh, spend a lot of energy in trying to remove the stains because if you try to use certain stain removers then the indigo will come off from there and it will leave uh, you know a contrasting white below so that's that's bound to happen if you use uh, stain removers so try and avoid using stain removers absolutely well thank you so much this was a fun episode i did not imagine we would go into the torque of uh, the looms and the sounds of the zippers uh, but good stuff and uh, if anyone wants any more information about uh, all of this or some guidance on where to purchase would it be your account or kora's account what would yeah you, you can you can uh, you can ping uh, bombayshirts.com there's a whatsapp uh, icon so you can reach our team and uh, if you want to reach me directly i'm available my emails sham.sook@gmail.com and uh, i i prefer that as the best method to communicate you know uh, i don't use instagram that much and if uh, you reach me on my phone uh, please don't think it's rude if i don't respond i will respond eventually you're a brave man to share your email id on a podcast <laughs> but thank you so much uh, for coming on the niche thing i will see you soon hopefully thanks thanks anish this was brilliant see you soon